it's just like uh, yeah like cartoons say something about the mandala that was very nice and he say like the mandala helps for the psychology to go deep in the subconscious yes so he make this uh, difference uh, interpretation about the mandala that we we understand that the mandala maybe comes from the Tibet or India that they are for certain rituals or purposes, yes? So mm -hmm. we know this traditional mandala historically that have the Buddha there that he, they sometimes place a different parts of themselves uh, there and they show you the path of the illumination, how they was illuminating in the mandala. They show you that the history mm -hmm. of the Buddha. But it's different kind of mandalas. I mean, I did that study and it's what I wanted to ask you because, uh, I mean, <clears throat> I become to, to say, well, it's like a mathematical mandala and maybe this mathematical mandala have to be with music, yes? But music from, like you say, from here, Occident, or well, I don't know what uh, no, no. is different. Oh, I don't know Indian. if I am mistaken or how is working this mandala music that, I mean, how is the notes, how is the rim? I mean, because have to be a harmony and have to be a cycle that go in infinite, but have to be in order. Yes. It's what I understand mm. about the mandala, because if the mandala go in not order, then will be like totally breaking the law of the universe that is not anymore a mandala that will be a disorder in the mind and in the universe will be something that will you have to take attention so for this one i don't know if i understand <laughs> did you understand me i, I explained myself or yes what I, I wish that you would speak more about this ragga music and har the harmony, the rhymes and mandala. I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think, I think I understand what you're saying. And I think that, that, I mean, even going in, going back to Pythagoras, for instance, and his idea of the harmony of the spheres, um, there has always been ideas about some kind of a universal mechanics of the universe, you know, like there's a, or a universal um, um, uh, dynamic, you know, in a way of like what's holding, what's holding the cosmic individuation together. Mm -hmm. And so I think that in different traditions, there was different, um, I would say mystical or, or there would be different types of experiences that people that were in deep, um, meditation or contemplation on the cosmos there they, they would have insights i would say that a lot of times this is in the mystical traditions um and i think that we that those those people like in india the the, the they would be called the seers like the the, the vedic um seers and uh, or rishis but the seeing and they're seeing almost like can you repeat that the seers what is that word yeah they're seeing, yeah, and I and see. there's a C -A S E E I N G, and and that's one of the 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 ways of the kind of classical ways of knowledge in in Indian metaphysics, um, it's called darshan, and the metaphysics is based on seeing, um, in a way. So they're called seers. It's all it it can also be called shruti, which is hearing, which is sort of like hearing the word of the divine or hearing the word of your guru in a way so there's these types of knowledge and um i think that all over the world there would have been these kind of mystical or cosmic kind of experiences in which people um and you you know that people would then express through art through myth um and so that would be one way to kind of understand at a certain point in time that there was that there was an experience that was held that was either held as a possibility of experience or was then cultivated and shared as a, a condition of experience or of a more illumined experience. Right. And so I think that the ragas have uh, some kind of 
um, at least some kind of ideological root in that, like in, in the Vedic culture. And, um, and so I think that uh, one, like one way would be to say that, well, these ragas are absolute. Somebody saw them and these are like the, the, these are like the, the purest of archetypes in musical form. And they're, and then you would accept them and say that this is an, this, these are the, this is the way it is. Um, and that would be kind of, I, I believe that would be called uh, a doxa. You're going to assume that that is a, that that's absolutely correct, you know, and you take that on as being, this is, the, this is the, this is the highest essence of the Raga and we will do that. Um, but there's also like your, your channel here is, is talks about art and time. And so I think that the idea of the fact that time changes, we know, we, we know ourselves and each other, society changes, the, the, the cultural um, codes change, um, aesthetics change, very importantly, technology changes. And all of this is going to amount to that, that question of like, well, now we perceive things very differently than in the past. And so I don't have any answers here, but I would just pose the question that um, we need to find ways to relate to the past, not as some kind of a purity that we've fallen from or some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, an origin point that we can never return to or that our role is to return to a pure origin. It's more like relating to the past and respecting the past with all the reverence that we can and respect and, and also saying, well, we are unique in a unique period of time. And so how is it that this, um, this tradition can kind of resonate with us to create a new future? And I think that I'm involved in, in this question, which is really like, are there absolute um, raga structures that are, or is there even an absolute mathematical um, um, law to the universe? Like the, like, well, the overtone series in music is a good example. It is, it is a, it's a, a scientific law that this is the way that sound is made up of overtones. Um, so every one sound that you hear is actually a whole, you know, it, theoretically an infinite series of sounds that all are based on the same mathematical structure. And so that would be one way to understand that, that that's kind of like a structure that, that we all can, I mean, we all experience to some degree, we have different experiences of it, but scientifically, it can be said well this is in every sound and but as a matter of what do we how do we interpret that's where i think that it's interesting because jazz um doesn't have such a past as indian classical music does and a lot of these jazz musicians were trying to open up and find some kind of uh some kind of an interface with the cosmic that was musical that was musical and these structures were a part of it but it seems in jazz um to me that it was a lot more emphasis was put on how we um, how we improvise with multiplicities of structures, and so an improvising musician may have some structures structures like phrases. Like I'm using raga music language. There's a collection of phrases. Um, jazz musicians may do the same. They may say there's a collection of chord um, chord progressions. There's a, maybe a, a series of notes but allow for the uh, almost like an organic unfolding of this. And I think that jazz doesn't, wouldn't, wouldn't rely on as much anyway, on one kind of inherited logic. It's sort of like trying to create your own logics in a way of, of musicality. Um, and I think that raga music is also part of this because it does evolve slowly in time. The evolution of music in jazz is very fast because jazz is only a uh, hundred years old. Where raga music, you know, the way that I've learned it, it trade like North Indian raga music, it traces back to the Mughal era. Like you could say maybe 50, oh, maybe a little before there's roots in it there. Um, but um, but the, the music kind of evolves a lot more slowly. And so you can see the relationship of these kind of archetypal or these really deeply shared types of um, structures, either whether they're they're kind of cosmic in a way like something like an overtone series or a tuning system like indian music like you said it does have a different tuning system there are different notes that are are really used um 
And that's also changing as there's, as we rely more on technology, modern digital technology is changing the, the whole nature of that. Um, and so it's these questions and how we can see them changing in time and learning, learning about what, what it means to us and how we can allow it to activate us. And so jazz has a whole different type of mandala, <laughs> you know, um, than raga music. But I, I still think that the, the, the model of the mandala it was very interesting and it could be applied to, to both. Yeah. Thank you.